کنفرانس در نیویورک سه دهه پس از انقلاب ایران شکست سیاست تامل با رژیم آخوندی کشمنداز تغییر نقش مقاومت حفاظت از مجاهدان اشرف I just want to say how humbled I am to be able to introduce our next speaker. General Hugh Shelton is an example of all of our finest in the military, who wears proudly the uniform of the United States and what our country stands for. This is a man who doesn't speak without meaning what he says and who's willing to put his life on the line for it. How fortunate are we to have General Hugh Shelton with us today? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your very kind words. It is a real pleasure to be with you here today. It's also a real pleasure to share the dais with such a distinguished group of my colleagues. And to those residents in Camp Ashraf today that are watching, I say, Salam Aleikum. I also send greetings to your magnificent leader, Mrs. Rajabi, President-elect Rajabi. You know, throughout my 38 years in the U.S. Armed Forces, I spent my, my entire time fighting for what was right, often against greater odds often against in an outnumbered position, but always knowing that I would fight for what was right. And in that entire time, our U.S. military was never defeated, except on occasion by the political process. And that's where I think we find ourselves today. The MEK, under President-elect Rajabi's leadership, has a 10-point program that would rival any country in the West. And the MEK is willing to fight for it, to ensure that every individual in Iran, man, woman, and child, can live under this type of a program, under a democracy, under a free Iran. But to do this, the, the fate of the residents of Ashraf are very important. They are key to restoring democracy in Iran. Yet, I am embarrassed to say today, that the Obama administration, President Obama, Secretary Clinton, have elected to remain on the wrong side of this issue. Even as the Mullah-controlled Iranian regime challenges the sovereignty of the United States by threatening to continue to develop their program of missiles, as an example, missiles that can even reach this hotel, the Iranians tried to blow up our Saudi ambassador right under the nose of the State Department in Washington, D.C. And then, worse yet, tried to blame that on the MEK, which and it's kind of ironic that the State Department then came out to defend the MEK and say, no, that was, that was the Iranian regime that did that. Iran, as we speak, is threatening to close the Straits of Hormuz, the most strategic passage point for oil in the world today. Iran's rhetoric threatens U.S. naval warships in the Persian Gulf. Iran continues their efforts to develop nuclear weapons, which is not lost on the rest of the world. I think everyone, several of our speakers, have spoken to that very clearly. And Iran remains the only significant backer of the murderous Bashar al-Assad in Syria. And I think the State Department should take note that the Iranians, in attempting to develop their missile capabilities, are attempting to develop missiles that could even reach foggy bottom.